One of the pleasures of this annual occasion, it is a pleasure rather than a pain, is that I get to feel agreeably humble in the face of individuals whose illustrious names have been linked with mine by this society. I felt it last year and I feel it this year again. It's a very nice feeling. It's an honour for me. It's also not a little frightening. Rebecca Neuberger Goldstein, Renaissance woman, MacArthur genius, and that accolade is not lightly given. Philosopher, deep-thinking yet lightly witty novelist, literateurs, teacher, scholar. How can one person be so multi-talented? One's almost tempted to add a 37th to her 36 arguments. The argument from unfair distribution of talent. Though God knows whether that's an argument for or against his existence. I know her less well than I know last year's awardee, who himself knows her very well indeed. So my speech must be based mostly on what I've read of her books, plus interacting with her at a think tank organised last year by the physicist Sean Carroll, and an occasion when I was promoting my autobiography and she interviewed me on stage. She was a warm and sympathetic interlocutor, but the Sean Carroll seminar made me realise that you'd be well advised not to try to outwit her or outlogic her or outsmart her or outcharm her. She's a champion of reason and realism in the face of reason's enemies. And reason's enemies, in her case, doesn't mean only the religious and superstitious, it also means sloppy relativists and posturing francophony postmodernists. I suppose that of all her books, 36 Arguments for the Existence of God, with its pointedly ironic subtitle, A Work of Fiction, is the book that called the committee's attention to her. It is indeed a novel, a work of fiction in that sense too, but like other good fiction, it searchingly illuminates, while making us laugh at, the world in which we live. In this case, that world is one that's very familiar to me and to many of us here. The world of American universities, the world of American atheism, the flaws and vanities, the virtues and foibles of those who inhabit this free-thinking echo chamber of ours. It's even fun to try to identify particular individuals we know, maybe some in this very room, although she's too subtle a novelist to make it a matter of naively simple identity. As a bonus to the story, we're given an appendix, which really is a comprehensive listing of all the available arguments for the existence of God, each one followed by a demolition job by this devastatingly logical philosopher. If there are other arguments not in her list, they're either variants of her 36 or frivolously comic ones which need no explicit refutation, like the argument from incomplete devastation, a plane crashed killing 143 passengers and crew, but one child survived with only third degree burns, therefore God exists. Or the argument from sheer will, I do believe in God, I do, I do, I do, I do believe in God, therefore God exists. Rebecca's 36 are all serious arguments which need refuting, and boy does she refute them. It's also a very Jewish book, and Jewish humour even creeps in amongst the seriousness of her 36 arguments appendix. For example, the cosmological argument, like the argument from the Big Bang and the argument from the intelligibility of the universe, is an expression of our cosmic befuddlement at the question, why is there something rather than nothing? The late philosopher Sidney Morgan Besser had a classic response to this question. And if there were nothing, you'd still be complaining? Her latest novel, Plato at the Googleplex, is less directly relevant to this conference, but let me end by recommending it anyway. It again satirises a world with which I'm all too familiar. In this case, the world of the American book tour, with its media escorts, its obligatory encounter with Bill O'Reilly, here called Roy McCoy, its on-stage debate with self-conscious and self-indulgent intellectuals, its visits to the New York 92nd Street Y and to the geeks of the Googleplex in Silicon Valley. All this gives Rebecca the opportunity to dazzle us with intelligent philosophical discourse, using the time-honoured platonic technique of the dialogue. The original twist in this novel is that the author hero of the book tour and chief protagonist of the dialogues is none other than Plato himself, who comes across as a delightfully courteous and unflappable character, ever open-minded, curious and 
eager to learn as well as to teach. I especially like the way Rebecca wastes no time on a science fictiony rationale for Plato's reincarnation. His dialogue partners spend little time commenting on the weirdness of his presence or asking him what it was like to live in the Athens of Socrates, Xenophon, Aristotle and the birth of democracy. The whole point is the philosophy itself. For example, the moral philosophy that might guide a modern day agony aunt. Also, the charm of Plato's fresh-minded enthusiasm for the novelty of our modern world, from the internet to neurobiology and its relevance to the ancient problem of free will. Like everything Rebecca writes and says, Plato at the Googleplex is a feast for the mind, satisfying and yet provocative. She goes a long way towards persuading even me of her subtitle, Why Philosophy Won't Go Away. I say even me because I have a kind of love-hate relationship with philosophy. The Duke of Argyle records the following conversation with Charles Darwin. I said to Mr Darwin, with reference to some of his own remarkable works on fertilisation of orchids and upon the earthworms and various other observations he had made of the wonderful contrivances for certain purposes of nature, I said it was impossible to look at these without seeing that they were the effect of mind. I shall never forget Mr. Darwin's answer. He looked at me very hard and said, Well, that often comes with overwhelming force, but at other times, and he shook his head vaguely, adding, It seems to go away. That's exactly how I often feel about philosophy and its importance to science. It does sometimes seem to go away. But any encounter with Rebecca Goldstein is calculated to make the importance of philosophy come back into the mind with overwhelming force. And whatever may happen to philosophy, Rebecca herself is an overwhelming intellectual force who's not going to go away. It is a huge honour for me to introduce her, Rebecca Neuberger Goldstein.